you know, they've yeah, played, played, played the, 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 the last Grand Slam final in, in Roland Garros. They've uh, played the last three here. So um, it's a fantastic rivalry. And, and you know, we sit here watching today's match and, and I don't think anyone really knows um, which way it's going to go. Later, I know I play against the best player of the world and the best player here on, on grass. And I, I have to play my best tennis all, day, all of this way. I have chances to follow him. We'll see, you know, it really depends on, on how the match turns out. Uh, I hope I got that extra gear in case I need it, so it should be a, should be a good match. Players make of these two in the locker room. Do they have a different presence from others, or is, it, is Djokovic in the same group? No, I don't think so. I mean, Djokovic has made great strides, don't get me wrong, but uh, these two, I think, with their results, have separated themselves from the pack. I think Nadal earned even more respect, but if this was possible, he got hungry. The whole world waiting to see this match being played. I remember seeing Nadal in his sleeveless shirt, all June biceps. And then right next to it, he'd got what looked like a prince, not a hair out of place. Maestro from Switzerland, number one in the world since February 2004. He's going for title number six. It was something not even the great Swede Bjorn Borg could achieve. It's beautiful. Here comes Roger. Roger uh, the final ready, ready. 2008. 2008. Here we go. Play. Play. As I'm younger than the other players, when I turn up at tournaments, I do sometimes feel as if all the others must play much better tennis than me. But when we get out on court, because I'm a fighter and I really hate losing, things tend to level out. is Rafael Nadal, just 17 years old in a couple of weeks, and an unbelievable talent. Yeah, well played, not deterred by his failed uh, tactics before, still going forward. And there's the coach, Tony? Uncle Tony, but
number one, leading the way behind a man who very might well become the world number one one day. Immense promise in this 17-year-old Spaniard, Rafael Nadal Pereira, to give him his full name. First point he's won, I think, from the net. Well, we had always um, a very uh, easy and positive relationship since the beginning. No? Uh, when you have uh, uh, a rivalry like, like we had, we played the exhibition for our foundations. Uh, we, we shared uh, important moments in, in the history of this sport, uh, on court and on and off court. Uh, we were able to, to build this relationship in a, in a, in a, in a very positive relationship. Absolutely wonderful court coverage from the man who refused to say no. Refused to give in in that moment. Yeah. He's done it! By a young man whose progress is so fast, so rapid, that one wonders where it will all end. Year. Do you now put Rafael in, in that category of the few players that can challenge you for the big tournaments? Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't want to talk about the future by this guy. <laughs> but uh, uh, got a pretty good one, I think. Well, and the clay court season's coming up, so that's great. Uh, Legend. A legend was born today. Roger Federer has an equal. What a brilliant backhand. What a heartbreak for Federer. Series Shield, the back-to-back -back victories here and in Monte Carlo. Prestigious title. Successfully defends his title. He's done it. The streak of 81 consecutive matches on clay has come to an end. For being this final for Balak, I lost today after 81 matches. But if I have to lose against someone, he's, he's the man. No? So, it's just fantastic, isn't it? Straight out of the blocks. 
both players look like they're timing the ball well, constructing the rallies well. serve it is first blood to the Spaniard in his attempt to win Wimbledon for the first time oh, relentless strength from Nadal there. We've seen it demonstrated all year. Oh, amazing right there. Nadal! A winner from an impossible spot. Defeated champion at Roland Garros. What would you say made the difference in this match? Some points. Today was tough for me, but uh, at the same time, uh, you know, it's, it's good to watch me playing on final like this against the best of the world in, in grass and playing at a similar level. You really had to be at your best today. Well, no doubt, yeah. I mean, he's I mean, a fantastic player and it's going to be around for so much longer, so I'm happy everyone I get now before he takes them all. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, he's improving so much, so congratulations, Rafael, for the second consecutive Wimbledon final. It's just, it's phenomenal. Do you remember how low you were after that 2007 Wimbledon final? I was sad and I was angry with myself because I wasn't able to endure mentally the pain, the suffering and the tension. Maybe uh, I'll compare with Roger right now. It's not possible yet because he has 11 grand slams, me three, three. But well, I am young. I am improving every every season and just try to continue and improve every day. What a shot! The baby bull really making the big bull look bad on that one. Well, that's not going to be good enough. That might be. No! Ole, David, Ferrar, you're into the quarterfinals with a win over the number two seed, Rafael Nadal. That's 
just pure genius. No problem with moving to that backhand side. He gets there, even though he's playing defense. Look at how low that ball is, and it surprises Nadal. He just can't get it. That'll do it. Is here in Shanghai. He has performed incredibly well, asserting his authority over his nearest rival. Oh. Rafa must be concerned. That is a very un Nadal like shot. Oh, oh. he's done it again. A fairy tale. He has obliterated the world's number two player, Joe Wilfried Songa. Hello and welcome to finals day here at the Monte Carlo Country Club. Jason Grohl alongside Robbie Koenig, privileged to be courtside for the continuation of a tennis rivalry that transcends the sport. World number one, Roger Federer, is attempting to wrestle the title from defending champion Rafael. A fourth consecutive win here at the Monte Carlo Country Club, equaling the record set by Anthony Wilde in back in 1911. We'll be desperate to stay injury free for the next six weeks or so. As he attempts to defend all of his titles. This rivalry be so good to have these two play so often in so many finals has been a blessing and it's obviously a, the one place, the one place on earth where Roger Federer is not king. Well, you know what's really kind of crazy? Here's a guy in Rafa Nadal who's won three straight French Opens, going for his fourth. I mean, there has been no other man who's ever won three Grand Slam titles and has never spent any time in the number one position. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you get asked this every time this year, but do you not feel a little like the best player in the world right now? You don't feel like number one? No. No, no. I feel like uh, number two because I am... <laughs> <laughs> I am number two. <laughs>
have a new world number one in the men's game. Uh, being number one always is a, is a goal. I, I fight a lot for the last few years, doing very good results, and right now, uh, for, well, finally, I, I am number one. Phil, you're playing the best tennis of your life now? Maybe not this week, but in the last months, yes. <laughs>be in your first final on the hard courts. Yeah, for sure, it's a, it's a very, very important effort for me, being this final. Uh, uh, anyway, what happened on Sunday, I, I started the season, my, my best start of the season ever. Anyway, I am happy for it. I'm just going to say vamos and good luck on Sunday. Thank you. Thanks. There must be plenty of motivation for you going into tonight's final. Well, absolutely. I think it's the first time I'm playing number one in the world in the finals, you know, for Grand Slam. So that's that's a new a new thing for me, and uh, I'm just excited playing my, my my biggest rival. Nadal going to the French Open. He'll be a heavy favorite. That's mm -hmm. two of the four Grand Slam titles. And he's shown that he can win at Wimbledon. And with his hard court performance here, who says he couldn't win at the U.S. Open? As we see Rod Laver tonight, who knows the future of Nadal? Are we seeing a, a, a Grand Slam out of this 22-year-old from Spain? There's no, There's no doubt, doubt that, that, that Rob is going to be a huge, huge favorite, favorite, a monster, monster favorite, favorite at the at French, French Open. Open. 
So world number one, Rafael Nadal, set for his fourth round encounter against uh, a gentleman you know is pretty well. And they had a very heated encounter where they played in Rome. And Nadal handled him comfortably, 6-1, 6 love. But it was the match at Wimbledon in 2007 where things really got a little uh, intense between these two. He said what? He was quite critical of your behaviour. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'd probably say the same, but I, mean, I won't do that. I keep it to myself. He was also complaining about um, the ball that hit the net and went over, um, not doing the courtesy wave, I guess. Um, the handshake, things like that. He must have been on his complaining mood today, don't I? Why, 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 why should I say I'm sorry when I'm like happiest moment of my life? <laughs> why should I say I'm sorry? <laughs> Rafa. And that will become a very famous picture if he loses this match. Wind, spin, nerves, incredible to see him. Never seen him miss it so many balls. And for the first time, someone is That's pushing. It. Someone's threatening to take his crowd. That is absurd. 125. Comes down to a tie break just to survive. For five years, people in this sport have wondered what it would take. What kind of a match would you have to play? What kind of effort would you need to beat Rafa here? Cuando el público en la central alienta con tanta intensidad a Robin Soderling, ¿qué sentís? All that work in the gym is paying off, I'll tell you. Listen to this. He's never, this never happened in Sweden. <laughs> Sí, es una pena un torneo que para mí es, es tan importante y tan bonito pues que, que el público nunca, nunca haya tenido un, un detalle conmigo, pero me quedan muchos años de volver. Ojalá algún año tenga un detalle por parte de ellos. Defending champion Rafael Nadal will not be defending his Wimbledon title next week. The top-seeded Spaniard announced on Friday that his ailing knees are not strong enough to allow him to compete. It's tough to accept for me. When I am playing, I'm thinking more about the knees than, than about the, net, the game, so that's very difficult to play well. He's done it. But disappointment for Nadal. The world number two can no longer qualify for the knockout stages. Oh, he wants the trainer for the knee. Another pause. Nadal has got to try and beat Murray on one leg. Surely that's not possible. I'm really sorry to say that Nadal has had to shake hands with Andy Murray. The injury clearly, he had no strength to push off. There was no contest in the end. 
he had no choice, and that's Murray is through to the semi-finals. He's my favourite player to watch, just because of what he brings to the court, his energy, and I was a bit gutted for him. <laughs> Definitely looking like he's finding that rhythm, that groove on his serve, which we've seen, which has been ever-present this tournament. There's a real atmosphere bubbling up in here. Yeah, he's picked him up. And Nadal is very much back in this set. What have you got to do to win a point against Rafael Nadal? Oh. Oh. He's a great man running out of ideas. Oh. Who says it is to Rafael Nadal? The five-time defending six champion. Games to four. Well, he's got a mountain to climb now. It is Rafa rewrites history. The sixth successive Monte Carlo title. Nobody has done that before. Points of all time. I mean, the confidence is back. I mean, he's won six times Rome Monte Carlo. He's won five times Rome. He hasn't won Madrid on clay. He's won it indoors, and so that's a new goal for him. So he'd like to win probably every tournament in his country. So I expect him back to top form. Seven Grand Slams now. How far do you think you can go? You just turned 24 years of age. How far do you think you can take it? <laughs> I want to enjoy this one because one year ago or a few months ago, I was a uh, little bit down because I, I was playing well, but I didn't win a tournament since uh, 11 months. So right now is uh, today is a very important day for me. We will see what's happened, you know, how difficult this win everyone. So it's a very emotional day for me.
always my dream and I did it two years ago. I did another time here and you know for the Spanish players for the last uh, 40 years it was very difficult to play here and we are doing better right now and we are very satisfied for that. Absolutely and Spain doing well in the World Cup. You won it two years ago when they won the Europeans so maybe that's an omen okay? We hope to repeat. <laughs> happen with Roger. I think Roger is playing great level, so it will be very difficult if he's in the final, and if he's Novak for sure going to be very difficult too. Novak Djokovic goes to the final. I think I have to say to Novak, he's able to, to be super professional, to, to control his body, to hold the passion, uh, doesn't matter how the, how the things are going, he always keep going till, till the end and uh, that's something very difficult, especially in a super uh, long career after all the success, uh, keep having the passion and the love for the game, I think it's something that I admire a lot. I'm really privileged to, to have the rivalry that, that we had over the years and I think we respect each other a lot and we push each other to the to the limit and kind of motivate each other to, to go even higher so it's great to be part of that era. Rafa is, uh, is playing fantastic tennis this year and uh, he's the best player in the world and uh, absolutely deserved. Uh, he's, he won uh, two majors already and he's seeking for his Grand Slam complete in, in career to win a title here. I will give my best to recover and, and, uh, and uh, give him a best challenge. Oh, he's made it as well. Take that. Two can play this game. Rafael Nadal, 24 years old, just completed a career Grand Slam in his first U.S. Open. How will you celebrate this career Grand Slam achievement? Well, I'm going to celebrate at home, for sure, with the family, but especially too with, with the friends. I like to go for a party, too, the night. <laughs> It. Would you believe it? What a return of serve. He's done it. Seventh heaven for Rafael Nadal, his seventh trophy of 2010, the 43rd of his career. of the Rafa Slam shattered. Rafael Nadal's hopes of holding all four Grand Slam titles at the same time over. And he proves his record to 24 wins and no losses this season. Victory! Djokovic. Oh, Djokovic is the champion in Rome. 
for the sixth time. Nadal hoists a coup de mousquetaire. Gitch, I hear you talk. You say, oh, well, Djokovic, best player now. You won three out of four last year. So something tells me maybe deep down in that heart, maybe you think you're the best still and maybe the best of all time. What do you think? <laughs> no, not for, for sure, no. It is just stunning, John, to see somebody else doing this to Nadal. We've seen Rafa do this a thousand times to other players. Novak Djokovic, Wimbledon champion and number one in the world. Oh, my goodness. Have you ever seen anything like it? It's a third major of the year for Novak Djokovic. Emulating Nadal of last year. Sixth final that he's beaten Nadal in this year. Two in a major. It is becoming a habit that we see these men in Grand Slam finals. I hopefully will come back a lot of years here. I will keep fighting. Thank you very much, everybody. So it's going to be an uphill task for sure for Roger Federer right now. Thank you. Take your seat quickly, please. Oh, disgusted with himself. Nadal still resists. Then you just sort of feel like today's the day for Nadal. Today's the day. But you just felt it was never going to be plain sailing. You knew that Federer was going to have an opportunity at some stage. The players are going off. Line judges off, everybody off. The umpire will stay up there probably and be pushed off brilliant. the court. There he goes. Bye bye. You always think when a break is taken that it favours the man who's losing. Federer certainly is losing at the moment. taking what the crowd want, and it's no disrespect to Nadal, but I think they quite fancy some more tennis. Well, that wasn't so much of a cheer as an eruption. It's, it is a final of dreams. 
and never in my wildest dreams said or Mary 18 months ago that I think Novak Djokovic would be staring history down right now trying to become the first man since my idol labor to win four in a row I'm still trying to figure out how he's gotten this much better that he could maybe say that Rafa Nadal Mary who we've talked about as being the greatest of all time on clay would no longer be the greatest if he loses this match today. next thing you know we're not quite sure about Nadal on clay for the first time yeah he's won six out of eight and he's tied Borg but now there's someone who may be able to deal with him on this surface I can't please don't rain please <laughs> yeah. let's get this one on That's a key shot for him. So the frustration is starting to show because he's not been able to gather any sort of real momentum. Wow. I mean, he can't play a point better than that. He still lost it. tournament you must have said to yourself of course you want to win this thing you want to beat Novak Djokovic in the finals here is that is that fair to say that's the guy you wanted no <laughs> I want another another one easier <laughs> Novak today is the best player of the world and for me after three grand slam finals in a row losing him is is great win this one Olympic champion Rafa Nadal has pulled out of the Olympics. The Spaniard has failed to recover from a knee injury and will not defend his gold in London. Rafa said that this was one of the saddest days in his career. The lowest point is impossible to say. The toughest part is when, when you really don't know when you will be able to start, when the pain of the knee gonna go. So it's normal to have doubts. There were some moments when we were thinking it was gonna be really difficult to get back to the level he was in previous years. Being the TYT Sports tennis correspondent is gonna get a little less interesting this summer, now with the news that Rafael Nadal is withdrawing from the US Open due to knee problems. Did you watch a lot of tennis when you were away? I watched a few matches, not a lot. I watched it, uh, Any match in particular you remember? I watched, I watched it, um, in the final of the US Open. History is made at the US Open! Nadal reportedly intends to compete at the Mabadala Tennis Championship in Abu Dhabi later this month. And then he plans to play at the season's first major, the Australian Open in Melbourne, in January 2013.
you see the months going and when you see the tournaments going and you are not there in the draw, uh, that's, that's tough. Tour. I'm Lee Shiras. Well, for so long now, 222 days, the worldwide tennis community has wondered about the fate of one of its greatest champions, Rafa Nadal. How bad were the knee problems he was having? How would it affect his career? When would he return to the game, if he ever returned at all? And when he did return, would it be the Rafa Nadal of old, the king of clay, seven French Open champions? Boy, that's a wonderful tennis point. Oh! Oh! Now it's a little wide. Nadal. Now we were expecting this result, but it still feels good to see Nadal on court enjoying his game, and he'll be happy with that 6-3, 6-2 win. We've got our rapper back. Yeah, probably th this match arrives a little bit early for me. You know, I, I need more time to be, you know, 100% ready to to compete against you know, players like like him. is confirmed for all to see at Indian Wells. Rafael Nadal did not play tennis at all for seven months, so the fact that he's in this type of form again is a bit mind-boggling. Rafael oh, no. <laughs> Nadal keeps making history. At Roland Garros, the first man to win any of tennis's major championships eight times. Recognize the pain in me, yeah. Don't change, I can't change, I can't change, I can't change, but I'm here in my boat, I am here. Oh. where the comeback stops. A pulsating encounter between these two champions. A 25th Masters title for the great Rafael Nadal. What a return for him to Montreal. There are moments before your match with Rafael Nadal. Is it still special after 10 years? 
It is, yeah. It's not a finals like it used to be, but it's uh, nevertheless still a big match. I think it's always exciting when the two of us face off. I'll take you down. Rafa, could you have imagined when you had to miss Australia this year, you missed seven months with your knee injury, that you'd be standing here having won nine events, going into the U.S. Open as one of the hottest players? No, should not. No, very, very happy. And he was going to volley that drop shot. He was in on it so fast. Great anticipation. Getting there in plenty of time and <laughs> right inside the line. The end of the second, beginning of the third, Novak was playing just amazing. And uh, when Novak plays that level, I am not sure if nobody can stop him. Then I had that low 40 that was really key moments of the of that match it was good so triple break point now for Djokovic in the important moments he played better tennis He was too loved to have a break this set. They can scarcely believe that their man has turned this around. Rafa's tough. He's a beast. He can play at this level for hours. Still, you have to keep in perspective, Chris, the fact that he wasn't here last year. Yeah. He didn't play this tournament because of that knee injury. Uh, and the comeback he's come since then has just been remarkable. You're into the final again, and you're going, if you win, you would win your 14th major title. That ties you with Pete Sampras if you do that. What would it mean to you to be on the same level with Pete Sampras as far as majors won? <laughs> well, first of all, <laughs> remain a very tough opponent in front. Fabrinka, Fabrinka is playing just amazing, winning a fantastic match against Novak yesterday against Berdic. So uh, he should come to this to this final with, uh, with a big confidence now. And, I never thought about having 13 Grand Slams already, so <laughs> I never thought about having 14, but the only thing that I can uh, swear is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my best. <laughs> this has been the major which he's had injury problems in his career. Says it's his unluckiest, right? Yeah.
thanks to Stan. You you really deserve it, and all your team. Uh, very happy for you. I know we, we have a great relationship. Uh, bad luck that was against me today, but you really deserve it. So many congratulations and all the best for the rest. Oui, c'est fait. Super. C'est fait. C'est fait. Rafael Nadal est revenu. Rafa, you're writing a history of tennis. You have 14 slams now, nine here in Paris. I'm sure it's a big emotion when you think about all the work you did to reach that level. So today the, the tennis uh, give me back what, uh, what happened in Australia. No? So for me, play here in Roland Garros is just unforgettable forever. Uh, just I want to say thank you very much, everybody here. It's just very difficult to talk for me right now. What a matchup we have in prospect. Nick Kyrgios, the 19-year-old wildcard who has taken this tournament by storm. And the man on the other side of the net is Rafael Nadal. Do you like Nick Kyrgios? Do you get on with him? I mean, dude's got how many slams? How much money in the bank account? I think he can take a ball to the chest, bro. I'm not going to apologize to him at all. It's clear that, of course, when he does stuff that, in my opinion, is, is not good, I don't like. I'm different. Rafa's different. You know, he, he can focus on what he needs to do. Um, you know, he doesn't know the journey I've been through. He doesn't know anything about me, so I'm not going to listen at all. When I criticize him in, in the past, is because I think he did a couple of things that uh, are not right and uh, not the, the right image for our sport and for the kids. These two players have very different. Kyrgios holds his arms aloft in celebration. He has prevailed in the third set tiebreak. Yeah. A stunning upset here on centre court. The world number one has been eliminated from Wimbledon 2014. That was, was what happened today. Congratulate to him. And for me, uh, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Defending champion Rafael Nadal has withdrawn from the US Open with a wrist injury. The world number two suffered the knock in training last month. That's part of the, of the of life, that's part of the sport. And just accept that no? and try to, to be ready for what's, what's coming. Me, you know, after a um, tough period of time without being on, on competition, last seven months playing just a few matches, Today was a little bit humid conditions today, you know, uh, I felt very tired after the first set during the whole match. You cannot expect to win matches in quarterfinals or Grand Slam helping the opponent to play well, so that's what I did. You've been very up and down, you've had a very good match, very so-so match in this no, tournament. No, very so-so, no, very bad. <laughs> <laughs> you can say, no problem. <laughs> it can happen when you are coming back from an injury or when you are out of rhythm.
Alexis Raonic has beaten Rafa Nadal for the very first time in the Canadian's career. And just recently, um, your coach Tony, he mentioned that maybe the, the mental side of the game wasn't quite there for you. Do you think with that, with that performance in Monte Carlo, it, it's back where it needs to be? But it's still that uh, this first few months of the season, I, I haven't been playing that consistent as, as in the past. I'm not happy about Barcelona, obviously I, I play very bad, it's tough, or when you are not in the right dynamic, it's, it's not easy to change that dynamic. Excellent set of tennis for Murray, a famous victory, his first against Nadal on clay. failed to win a clay court title in the month-long run-up to Roland Garros. Few players have actually beaten him on clay now. People in the other players in the locker room, they will feel like if he can beat him, maybe I can beat him too. He's been uh, going on record as saying that in important moments and matches now, um, he's feeling a lot more nervous than he ever did feel before. Rafa, the draw is over. Is it strange for you to be on the other side of the draw and you could possibly face Novak Djokovic in the quarterfinals already? Well, it's a strange, um, yes, because it didn't happen before in, in, in my career. But... In, in general, Novak has been under control the most of the time, so he was better than me. Oh, I don't see Nadal in the past missing oh, no, that shot. Not. You have a Grand Slam title in you left? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Up two, he's almost a sure thing. And he has it in him. It is Nadal who launches it wide. Look at that. For everybody, he's in the start and for everybody, is an end. That was a masterclass from Novak Djokovic on how to destroy Rafa Nadal. Stands 
And in sports news, Fernando Verdasco sent shockwaves through the Australian Open today by defeating Rafael Nadal to send the former world number one crashing out of the tournament's opening round. The, uh, the question of will he bounce back, that, that's a very big question because he has been trying to do it in, in the, the, the past few months. Both players received one additional challenge. Thank you. Thank you, quite please. Well, if all seven points in the break are going to be like that, the crowd are going to lose their voices. serve the next two points. seen a tie break like that since Borg McEnroe 1980 it was up there you were leading by two sets when Federer drew level did you think oh my goodness the champions back in this were you worried sure I'm worried and how happy are you to be back again on the clay and uh, stupid question but do you think this is where you'll have your most success this year on this surface yes as I said before, you know, it's always a, a great feeling to, to come back to places that I, I had a lot of success in the, in the past. So that always gives me positive feelings, positive energy, and it's an it's important clay course season for me, and I hope to be ready for it. He stole the point, and he stole the game. That's an incredible pass. What a way to seal it. And Rafael Nadal wins a ninth title in Monte Carlo. It's going to feel like a long, long way back for Nishi Corey now. The King returns in Barcelona to win his ninth title. Oh, that is simply breathtaking. Oh. How has he done that? First of all, for Rafael Nala, if he wins, that would be something unbelievable. The most dominant clay court player of all time. He's in very good form. He's gotten better and better as the year has gone on. And to beat him best of the five sets here at Roland Garros has proven to be the biggest test, the toughest challenge in men's tennis. Hello, and I'm 
here just to announce that I have to to retire from from the tournament. Rafael Nadal regagnera-t-il Roland Garros? No. He's 30, Tayo. So Time not, is ticking yeah, away. Yeah, the biological clock uh. is ticking really fast now. playing certainly a favorite and a 14-time Grand Slam champion, Rafa Nadal. Yeah, how the hell did you do it? I'm at six old. I didn't want to miss. <laughs> he missed before me. Mental or physical, doesn't matter. I lost. I am out of the tournament. But I need it. I need something else. I need something more that was not there today. And they're gonna keep working to to try to find. Rafa Nadal has hired an old friend as a new coach. Ya se entrena únicament amb Carlos Moya, sense Tony Nadal. Carlos is joining Uncle Tony Nadal, the only official coach that Rafa's ever had. Now they're going to team up to help Rafa win another title. If you're going through a hard time right now, if you've gone backwards instead of forwards in your life, if you're not where you want to be or not where you expect it to be at this point in your life, if you're going through a setback right now, I want you to know one thing. The comeback is always greater than the setback. No matter how low you fall, you can get back up. No matter how deep the hole, you can dig your way out. Pick up yourself and decide to fight for your life. If you decide your life will be different from this moment forward, it can be different. But you have to decide. Most people don't put the brakes on. They let their out of control vehicle, their life, keep rolling down the hill. You have to put the brakes on. You must figure out how you are going to get yourself back up that hill. Don't let your life spiral out of control. You are better than that. You are more than this moment in time. Wake up, get up, and let's get started. I've been down too. I've been there. We've all been there. The hole keeps getting deeper. That's what I'm talking about. Keeps getting bigger. The challenges. This is great to see you back at this level. You've had a lot of injuries and issues, missed time on tour. What does it mean to you to have a chance to lift one of these trophies again? You know, I never ever dreamed to, to be back in a, in a final of uh, the Australian Open in, in the second tournament of the, of the year after a uh, um, lot of months without competing. But uh, here I am now, and I feel lucky, and I feel, uh, you know, very, very happy. Really. We feel very lucky as well because you're going to play your great longtime rival, Roger Federer, in the final. What do you expect from that one? We're all thrilled. For me, it's a, it's a privilege, you know, and uh, it's a very, very special thing, I think, for both of us to be in the final of a major again. Never, I think both of us, we never thought that we're going to be here again in the final of Australia. So we feel, I think, very happy, and I hope you feel happy. Too. One has no choice but to say, no one deserves it more than you. They'll say, no one worked harder than you. So no one deserves it more than you. Work that hard. This is your last comeback story. It's in. Victory for Be honest with yourself. There will be no comeback for anyone that is lying.
trying to do safe. I'm just going to keep trying. No, I, I feel that I am, I am back at a at very high level, so I, I'm going to keep fighting during the, the whole season to have fun. History books in Monte Carlo. He becomes the first man to win a single event on ten different occasions. It's out. Nadal's got number ten in Barcelona. For three years, Rafael Nadal has suffered at the hands of Novak Djokovic. But today, he's turned the tables. Rafael Nadal wins a fifth title in Madrid. This morning, about the about the match, about the the final, uh, about playing against him. You put this doubt in your head when you play against him, and he's playing so good. The dream comes true. La decima. It's his. Uh, the adrenaline that I feel when I play in this sport, uh, impossible to compare to another feeling. So just the most important event in my career, without a doubt. So win again here is something that I cannot describe. Thank you very much. Difficult to talk like this. <laughs> uh, for me, it has been a fantastic season, very, very emotional one after all the things that uh, I have been going through the last uh, couple of years in terms of injuries. Sissipas is in trouble here. Oh, that's wonderful. King Rafa reigns in Barcelona for the 11th time. It's a perfect 10 for Nadal. Oh, come on! How big was that? Rafa rules in Toronto his fourth 
Rogers Cup title, the fifth trophy of 2018. Dropping stuff. <laughs> Victory for Nadal. He is the king of queens tonight. He takes down Dominic Team in an absolute. Epic. It's like a different dimension of tennis completely. He gives you no rhythm. He plays just you know different game style than the rest of the players and he has this I don't know talent that no other player I have, I have I've never seen a player have this. But just he makes you play better. I don't know, I don't know, it's I call I would call that a talent. Rafa is in the Australian Open final again. Six, 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 did, you, uh, did you watch Rafa's <laughs> match and did you go out with the intention of conceding fewer games than he did? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Of course, playing Rafa uh, requires a, a different approach uh, tactically. Uh, you know, he's my biggest rival. I've played so many matches against him, epic matches on this court. Of course, the one that stands out was the, the finals of six hours almost in 2012. And, Hopefully we don't go that that long this time, but uh, I'm sure we're going to have a good finals. It's just brilliant. Djokovic at his very best. That's not the backhand we've seen through the tournament. That's tight. Djokovic holds again. He's two games away from his seventh Australian Open crown. It's a step ahead all the time. He knows where Nadal's going before Nadal does. I don't say I have been destroyed. I have been uh, playing against a player that was uh, at the highest level possible, in my opinion, tonight. Rokovic's journey ends with a substantial victory over one of his great rivals and he enters the record books. And gentlemen, Mr. Nadal is now receiving a medical timeout. Just that look of uncertainty on Nadal's face right now. Look of concern as well. We're just hearing breaking news once more. Nadal is out. Rafa texted me a message saying it's not going to be possible, uh, my knee's not well and he can't do it. Uh, I felt that my knee was not uh, enough good to, to compete at the level that I need to, to compete to, to play a semi-finals match of this event. We've had so many epic battles that, uh, yes, I know that every one that we have now it could be our last. So was this our chance for the last one? I, I really hope not. Our plans were different, uh, but uh, well, uh, you have to adapt uh, with what you have. It is a day Fabio Fanini will remember for the rest of his life. It was these kind of days that um, everything was wrong. Dominic Team takes down the King of Clay on the dirt. A win he will never forget. Stefano Tsitsipas gets his first victory over the great Rafael Nadal. What happened in Monte Carlo happened, and what happened in Barcelona happened, what happened in Madrid happened. And here we are. We are in Rome. Oh, yes. Sensational from Nadal.
That's brutal. It's a ninth title for Rafa in Rome, and it's come at the perfect time. Just days before he begins another title defence in Paris at Roland Garros. He does that to anybody, you know, on the clay. He makes you feel uncomfortable the way he defends the court uh, and plays on clay. There's nobody who even plays remotely close to him. After these two sets, I dropped a little bit my level. And through to the final on Sunday. The summer is just almost perfect because finally in Washington, finally in Montreal, winning Cincinnati, final here already. Is is the player who is in, in better shape on tour. So I will face the player who is winning more matches of the year and the player who is playing at the highest level. in my mind I was already okay uh, what do I say in the speech uh, it's gonna be soon in 20 minutes the way that he he was able to to fight to change the rhythm of the of the match was just uh, incredible because the nerves were so high after having the match uh, almost under control. He's got him with the pass! He's got him! What a strike to fall! The doll cannot believe it. Oh, 
big dreams are looking pretty. No place in the world that can compare. Put your legacy in the air. Everybody to see it. Yeah. How can you believe yeah. it? The chase in the all-time leaderboard major title. But that's the main thing, you know, yeah. who's going to actually break through, because at the end of the day, Rafa won again. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and these guys keep piling up the majors. At the age of 33 and a half, I will have this trophy <laughs> on my hands again. So, <laughs> it's. Uh... <laughs> if we don't like each other, whatever. We, I think there's a, a layer of respect. We both know that. I mean, he's he's one of the greatest of all time, and I also read that he he thinks I'm good for the sport. Going to be an interesting match. We're going to set a pace here. Nick is leading his army of believers. He's one of the highest talents that we have on, on our tour. Um, and I like the Nikirios of uh, during the whole this tournament. Yeah, I mean, we, we had already had this uh, epic match in, in New York uh, two years ago, and, and today I had really the feeling that I was lucky in the right situation. Uh, Net code was, was really on my side. Uh, but... It's, uh, it's necessary because he's uh, obviously one of the greatest of all time, biggest legends. Uh, this is sports ever had, so you need some luck to, to beat him. Finally, Dominic team beats Nadal in a slam. I think he played great matches against me in the past two. You know, we, I think we like each other in terms of uh, character and uh, I like his attitude. Uh, probably he likes mine too. <laughs> it's an Acapulco hat trick for Rafael Nadal. It's horrible to see all these different sporting events going away. Bring you some breaking news, and it is that uh, Wimbledon is now cancelled. The, the 2020 Tokyo Games could be cancelled. The French Open has officially been postponed until after the US Open. My decision is to stay here. What a surprise. Diego Schwartzman was able to break Rafa Nadal five times, and then in the end, close it out. He's done it! It is a first ever win against Rafael Nadal. Schwarzman beat Nadal in, in Rome, so the situation is so different this year also for, for Rafa, even if he showed uh, that he is really solid. He was a bit anxious at the beginning of the tournament with the conditions, the balls and a lot of things, but we could see that match after match he really got his confidence. But there will be a fight and, and I think it can be an amazing semi-final. Yeah. Rafa is Rafa and I think he, he knows how, how to improve, he knows uh, how to practice, how to do everything and after, the, after Rome he, 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 he goes straight to practice and that's why he's in the final right now. Two titans of the game will go head to head for a 56th meeting. If we stay on conditions for a second, they are getting warmer, courts are getting dry, it's not going to bounce up as high as Nadal would like and that's what Djokovic has said in terms of these conditions, they are slightly better for him. To me, like I said, it, there is not much between these guys, but for some reason I just feel like um, Novak has what it takes to beat Rafa here. Obviously the conditions are, are different, so I, I, I think that that could be a better chance for me. Obviously we can't predict the future, but I just uh, have a feeling this might be the time for Novak to be able to do that.
that I was completely overplayed by by Rafa, by better better player on the court. Sorry for for today. Uh, you know, in Australia he killed me uh, a couple of times ago. Uh, clear today was for me. Three championship points for Rafael Nadal. <laughs> In 2020, Rafael Nadal makes it 20 with arguably the greatest ever clay court performance. Point. Nadal's win today ties Roger Federer's record of 20 Grand Slam titles. Roger Federer has already been on social media and s described this victory as one of the greatest achievements in sport. Thanks to Roger for the for the words. No, I think, as everybody knows, we have a, a very, very good relationship and uh, we respect each other a lot. That's the first one we've seen for a long time. A miss. Rafa Nadal smash. And I think he might do a few bit of smashing practice yeah. with uh, <laughs> yeah. with Carlos Moya back what, at the what, academy. Will he be smashing though on the <laughs> other hand? Yeah, I don't hopefully know. the overhead smash. Yeah. Oh. Wow. He's missed two smashes. Oh my goodness! You rarely see him miss a ball this easy. Advantage, Tietjens. How many times has Rafa lost from two sets to Lover? Well, we now know that Rafa Nadal is out of the Australian Open. A disappointing moment there for the Spaniard. Where does he, he go from here? Um, two, three weeks off, most probably. I mean, he's going to hit some balls. Get back on those clay courts. Rafael Nadal is a champion in Barcelona for a 12th time. How on earth did he pull off this pass? He's got him. Nadal makes his move. It is a 10th title for Rafa in Rome. He draws level with Djokovic on 36 Masters trophies. Oh, yes! Novak will be wondering how on earth he lost that point. Oh! Sometimes you lose. I try to give my best. Uh, probably was not my my best day. I am very sorry to to announce that I will not be able to to keep playing tennis during the 2021 season. Now for the second year in a row, a five-set final between the two best players in the world. First time in three hours and 37 minutes. Rogers in the lead. Yeah, figure out. That's the first time we've seen Rafa Nadal shake his head this entire tournament, and why not? Two match points in the four set tiebreaker. That's brilliantly played. Play is stopping, and that is too bad. Yeah, and he's suspended. 
three hours and 56 minutes of first-class drama on centre court. I think Rafa might be done. I don't quite know what shape he's in. I mean, he won a tournament, didn't have to play a player in the top 75. But three out of five sets on a hard court on his body, I, I just don't know. He must re recognize he's at the end of his career. Everybody have doubts, everybody have uh, frustrations, and everybody's making mistakes, no? And the uh, most important thing is about how you react. to win 21 major titles. How about that moment on Sunday? Uh, I never thought about another chance uh, in 2022, so just try to enjoy the victory of today, and then after tomorrow, I'm gonna try my best. When I was uh, like eight, 10 years old, I was uh, playing against the wall and uh, was imagining uh, that it's Rafa on the other side. I'm not blind. I know what, what's happening. I know what Rafa is going for. I knew what Novak was going for. I'm not gonna say, oh yeah, I don't. I even try not to, to listen about this. But it's kind of their thing, you know, it's not mine, and uh, I'm just uh, there to try to win uh, the final. Relentless from the Russian, 6-2, opening set. Oh my goodness! That is truly majestic from Medvedev. Surely is the decisive point, the defining moment for Daniil. What defense. Medvedev has got the hammer and nails out and is about to put the lid on the coffin. I need to fight until the end. I need to believe because I uh, going to be almost impossible, but I can't forgive me if I am not fighting until the end. Nadal showing bits of magic to his fans, somehow trying to claw that deficit back. Outstanding from Rafa, upstanding from the crowd. Scintillating shot from the Spaniard. Er hat es geschafft.
cabeza un tiro libre es una imagen para la historia del deporte it's the miracle in melbourne y ya es el tenista con más títulos de gran slam de la historia antes de comentarista soy ser humano y esto es absolutamente inenarrable lo que ha conseguido Nadal me parece alucinante I can lose the match uh, or he can beat me but I, I can't uh, give up 21 major titles from one of the greatest players of all time Rafael Nadal is Mr. Invincible Now it's been a memorable couple of weeks here in Paris and certainly another memory will be made today. We're getting ready for what could be a milestone match for the 13-time French Open champion Rafael Nadal. Rafael Nadal. Rafael Nadal. Rafael Nadal. Rafael Nadal. Rafael Nadal. We've done this so often, yet it feels special. Is Rafa, can somebody beat him? Uh, is this really happening <laughs> again? I just want to... <laughs> well, yeah, reality <laughs> here. <laughs> John, how lucky are we to see this guy again behind us on this great court for the 14th time in a final? I mean, soak it all in, right? <laughs> I, uh, exactly. I mean, it's, it's funny because he just came out of the court. It's, it's come full circle for Rafa. You, they used to boo him because he was so good. Mystified you. Can't give Nadal a hard time by not talking to the TV guy. Come on. Me quedan muchos años de volver. Ojalá algún año tenga un detalle por parte de ellos. Please come back. Just don't say it might be not another year because we love you so much and we want to see you many, many more times on this court. Now they realize he's so damn good we're going to cheer for him. <laughs> It's 14 and 22. Another outrageous run for Rafa at Roland Garros. This place is unique for me. You know, uh, all the the story that uh, I have in this in this court is just amazing. So uh, the feelings uh, are difficult to describe every time that I have the chance to play here. in the abdominal something is not going well not being honest so uh, for, the, um, for a lot of moments I was thinking uh, maybe I will not be able to finish the match but uh, I don't know uh, the court the energy is something else so uh, yeah thanks for that and yet again Rafael Nadal finds a way well, unfortunately, as, as you can imagine, if I am here, it's because I have to uh, to pull out from the tournament. No, uh, as everybody saw yesterday, I I have been suffering, <laughs> and that's the thing that I I, I can say now and <laughs> feel very sad to say that. hope was I could play doubles with Rafa, so I called him up after the US Open and it was a very emotional uh, phone call actually because it was one of the first times I told somebody outside of my um, 
team and, and family. And I had to call him up and tell him, hey, Rafa, just before you make any other plans, I would love you to be at the Labour Cup and play maybe one last doubles with me. It would be amazing because, unfortunately, my knee is not so good anymore. And I think it's the end, you know. And he's like, oh, yeah, oh, my God, OK, yeah, I'll be there, whatever it takes. I am just proud and happy to be, to be next to him on this very special moment. A new injury, is that the hip? Well, I think the whole of the tennis world just holds its breath again for Nadal, who, as I've already referenced, has had so many injury issues. If it's not the end, it definitely feels like the beginning of the end. Whatever happens next, there will be no one like this man. There will never be another Rafa Nadal. And as he leaves the Rod Lane Arena with us wondering whether he will come back, let's take this opportunity to say thank you for the memories, Rafa. Can't say that I am not destroyed <laughs> mentally at this time because I will be lying. So, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's hard. First thing, uh, not able to, not going to be able to play in, in Roland Garros. We were not able to find um, the solution uh, to the problem that uh, I had in Australia. So I am not the guy that's going to be in Roland Garros and uh, just try to be there and put myself in a position that I don't like to be in. He was, I was saying that always that he's my biggest rival and when um, he announced that he's going to have his last season uh, of career, you know, I felt part of me is living with him too. I, mean, I was actually in the, uh, in the stands watching the uh, Rafa Roger Wimbledon final um, and <laughs> I actually left when it started raining. Back into the locker room once again. Nadal, two match points in that time break. Y, y eso fue lo que le dije a Tony, ¿no? Yo no, yo no voy a fallar. Federer podía ganarme la final, pero yo no iba a perder la final. And the tennis gets better and better, and the crowd louder and louder. Got to six, but there's no tiebreak in a fifth and deciding set at Wimbledon, so we go on. We'll see. The five-time defending champion is at the mercy of Rafael Nadal here.
not the first victim, so uh, I know that there have been many before. So. Today I was uh, I was amazed, like uh, especially I mean during the match I tried uh, I tried just to play tennis, but after the match I just you know asked him uh, like Are you tired? <laughs> the quality of tennis he was producing and the level I mean is phenomenal. And the way you are playing is a big joke. <laughs> it's very tough to play against you. Rafa, who, who won this tournament 12 times, he stepped on me. If, if you win a Grand Slam tournament 11 times, uh, one single one, then this is this is just uh, exceptional. You know, he can really take you know take matches out of your hands. So he put this doubt in your head when you play against him and he's playing so good. He has won this tournament now nine times. 13 Grand Slams for uh, a guy who is 27 years old is, uh, is incredible. Rafa was a better player. Felicitations Rafa for an enormous tournament encore une fois. He's uh, the best player in the, in the world and he absolutely deserves this title. He's really the champion and he just deserves to win today. Uh, if you continue to play like this, you will be sure have the chance to win many more. So Rafa, congrats. You played incredible, you deserve it, man. Look. Uh, Rafa's deserving champion, he just played fantastic. I hope, of course, to do a bit more today than four games. Rafa played well today, he made it hard for me. I, mean, I definitely think he's improved, you know. I... And this kid's going to be a legend. A legend was born today. You are the king of this palace. Thank you very much. We just want to say gracias. Bonjour Paris, on se voit en 2024. Merci beaucoup.